The government are refusing the bill to investigate what happens during COVID from Ain2. And I believe that the reason that they are is because they don't want anybody else to account for that situation. They want to just glide on as if nothing has happened. During your Ardesh speech, one of the points you made was you were saying that there's a certain disconnect between the politicians and ordinary people because politicians, many of them, their only job was really politics. They never understood what it was like to, for example, run a business and have to pay bills and so on. And so from that perspective, do you think that having more kind of bottom up ordinary people involved in a grassroots way in our political system would be beneficial. Well, first of all, I'm absolutely delighted uh, to be here as the uh, Ain2 Ordesh today. We have hundreds of people who have come from all over the country as delegates uh, to this Ordesh. And so it's a vibrancy and a growth that uh, bodes well for the future development of our organization. The, what, the key issues, the key theme, if you like, of we're focusing on um, in this Ordesh is obviously the, the bread and butter issues such as the cost of living, the housing crisis and the health service, you know, the, the crime and antisocial behaviour issues that are happening. But we're also looking at the reasons why they're happening. And we believe that there are three main elements why they're happening. The first is that detachment from the political class and the people they're meant to represent. Um, and, you know, I find what happens in the Dáil is that we have these career politicians who have no experience of the bread and butter jobs, have never been in business, that, you know, they've never held down a proper nine to five and dealt with you know, the costs and the experiences that most people deal with. They've gone straight into politics and they're there for life, they're career politicians. And I think what happens to them is that they get detached, they don't realize what people are going through and they don't realize uh, you know, that the conversation around the family is like, how do we pay this bill? You know, or that people, are, their parents are lying awake and going, how do we afford to put, uh, 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 fuel in the car and get to work and get the kids to childcare. So those questions, those you know crossroads, those big decisions are simply not dealt with them in a real manner. They may hear about them, they may even try to relate to them, but I tell you what, if you don't experience something like that, you don't realise the enormity of it and you're probably less motivated to try and fix it. And um, so what we're trying to do is, as a political organisation is to get real people with experience work in all different uh, areas uh, and try to get them you know, into politics, into representation, to bring that real life experience to the doll. The other issues that we're looking at in this as well is the, um, the, the lack of capability within the, the, the political class. Uh, there's a serious lack of uh, capability in the political class at the moment. Uh, and what I mean by that is that ministers are going into departments, they're meeting with senior civil servants who have plenty of experience, who have PhDs coming out their ears, and they're being bought and sold um, by those uh, senior public servants. And many of these senior public servants are even getting wages two or three times the amount uh, of the politicians. Uh, and those public servants can think of a hundred reasons why not to do something. And I believe that they're, they disempower the, they, the, the, the ministers and they run their departments. So we have this inverted authority happening. So in a normal democracy, authority comes from the people. The people elect representatives who direct the public service to deliver upon the wishes of the people. But that's not happening. We, we, we see it in real time time in the likes of the health services where you know Paul Reed and, and, and others basically dictate to ministers what to do. Paul Reed went on the radio and said he wasn't going to implement a direction of the minister. He said that the minister was wrong in his position. Like what's going on there? Like I'm no fan of Stephen Donnelly, but you know if a minister can't uh, stamp their authority on a department, the minister needs to go and let somebody else who can. And, and then the other issue is accountability. Uh, Irish politics is an accountability free zone. Um, and for example, Ainthu is the only political party that has developed a bill which seeks an investigation, a commission of investigation in what happened during COVID. Because we had an, an, an enormous catastrophe for so many people. You know, we had the longest and most severe lockdowns in Europe, which had enormous costs. Uh, and we're saying as a people, let's investigate that, find out you know, why those decisions are made, who made those decisions and how we can actually learn from them. But the government are refusing the bill to investigate what happens during COVID from Ain2. And I believe that the reason that they are is because they don't want anybody else to account for that situation. They want to just glide on as if nothing has happened. We see now as we're coming into the winter, uh, certain health specialists warning that we're facing, you know, another Armageddon winter. And, you know, some, some of this people might say is hyperbole and so on. But in truth, we haven't substantially increased our ICU capacity, which was the problem that justified the last lockdown and the lockdown before that, according to the government. So 
I suppose, do you think it's likely that we could be phasing into another lockdown? Would the government try that? And, and if so, what would your reaction to that be? Well, first of all, you know, COVID is a real illness and there are people who are susceptible to it and are vulnerable to it. And those people need to be protected. But the point is, the most important thing that the government can do to fight COVID is to provide hospital capacity. Um, that should be the first line of defence. And actually, we need hospital capacity anyways. We have 1.3 million people on hospital waiting lists. We have the worst waiting list in A&E in the history of the state. So the whole idea here should be to increase hospital capacity. And we banged that drum non-stop in the two years of the lockdowns. But government has not increased hospital capacity. Um, you have situations where you know, ICU beds are still no further on, really, than where they were. But 300 ICU beds in the state, when the HSC said 10 years ago we needed 500 in normal times. So, you know, there is a danger that the government will start to lean on people's lives again instead of actually doing the right thing with regards to hospital capacity. If they do so, it will be a travesty. And we will push, as Aintu did in the last two uh, lockdowns, we will push as hard as we can to stop that.